According to this article, one of the main regrets of those in their deathbed is they wish they didn't have their notion so messy. Looking at my YouTube demographic data, you may be around your 30s, something like that. So don't worry, you still have time to avoid making that mistake. And I have good news, because I have found a very simple trick that will allow us to reduce the messiness in our Notion workspace. Let me show you. From what I've seen all around, most of the messiness of a Notion workspace comes from the way that we capture data. Because we may not be inputting the information correctly, or altogether, we may not have a way to input data and we just create and put whatever. And then Notion can start feeling like our desktop in our computers that whenever we have something to save and we don't know where to save it, we will just save it to the desktop. So then when we're in a Zoom call and we have to share our screen and accidentally we show our desktop, we feel ashamed and we just want to leave the country. So for context, this is uh, how a task or project management system uh, will always uh, work, like with all the parts. But what is most important for this video is that we can see here that capture is what ignites the rest of the system. And it doesn't really matter which type of system we are talking about, capturing is always there. We are always capturing information and processing it in some way or another. So that's why it is so important and so key that we have this part of the system dialed down. Having a bad capturing system is like powering a car with a bottle of water that's going to break. And believe me, if we fix the way that we capture our data, we will fix 80% of the problems that we have with our Notion workspace being messy because we will standardize the way that we input information into our system. There is two main ways that we use for inputting information into systems. First one is automated, and the second one is manual. In this video, I'm not gonna talk about the automated ones. I already have some videos in this channel that talk about automated ways to input information into systems. I'm gonna talk about the manual ones. So the simple trick is creating input points for the different kinds of information that we are gonna be saving. And those input points should be just one per type of information, just one, because it is the only way that we have to standardize the way that we input information. So before I show you how to create these input points, let me show you where we are going to be directed. So in my workspace, I have here this part of the sidebar that it has just one purpose, which is to create whatever. So create tasks, create calls, create blog posts, create YouTube videos, create Twitter tweets and threads. And all of this is just views of different databases. So if I ever want to create a task, I will just come here and create a new task. Okay. And that's it. So this is the, the only purpose of this, of this view. Now, let me show you how I create this. Let's start over here and since we want this to be in the sidebar it will create as a as a page i like to call it create because as then everything is going to be indented inside of create it kind of makes sense like create task create call so yes this is why why i chose to do it so now let's work with the example of a task manager which if you're using notion for task management is something that you will have to add quite often new tasks so let's see how how this works here of course, if you're using Notion as a task manager, uh, you will have all of this in a database. So what we need is to create a linked view of the database and select the task manager. This one, since now we can modify the icons, we can use this plus icon. And if we want this to be as minimal as possible, we just have to press space and enter and we just have the icon over here. Now. What is important here is to just show the properties that we want to feel whenever we are creating a new task, which in my case is going to be the day that I'm going to do the task, the estimated time that is going to take me, because then this is going to allow me to schedule without overscheduling the project and my related goal, if any. Okay, these are going to be the properties that I want to feel every time. But now, how do I clean this view? I have one created time property that what I do is to set that the created time is today. And that is it. So like this, just the tasks that are created today are going to appear here and tomorrow they are going to disappear because my purpose is that this view is mostly empty. Let me make this full width. If you don't have this created time property, you can just create it from here. Click on the plus, find created time. That's it. And you have it. Okay, let's delete it. So what this is creating on the sidebar it is, I have right now this view of tasks, which if we click here and we go over here, we can rename and we can just call it task. 
So like this, these reads create task, which makes sense. Now, of course, we can play with icons and for create, we can use the plus icon. Okay, so create task. The way that we will create task, it will just be from here, new task. And then we have the possibility to select the due date, estimated time, the project and the goal. And that's it. That's all we need to do. Like this, we are standardizing the information that we put in all the tasks that we enter in our system. And of course, if we want this page to always be accessible, we can always favorite it so it appears here on the top. Furthermore, if you want this to work with mobile, making it favorite is going to help you to get to this, to this page. Or well, if you are using Android, you can create a widget. If you are using iOS, you can also create a widget to, to come to this page. Of course, let's hide the database title because it's just ugly. But now let's go a little bit further. We are just here showing some properties, but there are more things that we can do when we create tasks. Let's say that we are working for a software company and all the tasks that we create are actually bugs from our software. So we want uh, that inside of the task, we write here the steps to reproduce the issue, the description and different photos and, and so on. So we can do that whenever we create a new task, we run the template of bug report, for example, and here we can write the template for a bug report. Okay, so we have our bug report template. So what we can do is that this template runs automatically only in this view. So let's say that we wanna call this new bug and we want that everything that gets created here is a bug. And maybe we wanna create another view just for general tasks. So we can go here and select this as default and set this as default only on the new bug view. So like this, every time that we create something from here, it's going to be a bug report issue, whatever. And then inside of it, we will already have the template so we can define our bug report. So let's continue this example. And let's say that, yes, that we also want to create new tasks from here. So the only thing that we will need to change is the default template. So this is going to be the default only on new tasks view. Okay, so whenever we create a task from here, it's just going to be a simple task. And from here, it's going to be a bug report. And of course, if we go to our sidebar, we will see it over here, new bug, new task. So you can do as I do with my Twitter, for example, because I have two types of tweets, which is normal tweet and threads. So whenever I go to new tweets, I will be adding a tweet. And whenever I go to the new thread, I'm going to be adding a thread. And these two different views, yes, which is the same as we have over here. So now the only thing that you will need to do is to define the things that typically you tend to input into your Notion system. First, create the databases that will allow you to host this information. And finally, just create this create a page with all the different views just for inputting information into the system by using the create time today a filter. So this is always empty. This, of course, as I said in the beginning, is going to solve like 80% of your messiness. But of course, for one time things that you want to uh, create, this is not going to solve it because this is just going to work for the things that you continually create. But well, it is a good starting point and it's going to be super helpful to standardize this. And this is going to be even more important if you are working with a team because it's a very easy way to tell the team which are the properties that you always need filled for, in this case, every task. Let me know in the comments if you find this useful or if you have a better way to do it because I'm always open to, to learn new things. So that is it for today. And as always, hasta la próxima.